Hello, welcome to The Just Tales. Today's video is going to be all about how I'm doing my stair banister DIY. This is a project I've been wanting to do for two years. We've been in this house for two years. So I've done a lot of research the past few days and I went and got everything I needed from Lowe's yesterday. So I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm gonna do and this is gonna be like a few days of a project. I wanna do the tutorial as I'm doing everything. Um, I'm very confident it'll turn out great. And as far as durability, I won't be able to speak to, but from what I've researched, I'm using a exterior wood stain from Valspar. It's very high quality and so it should be very durable. So we'll see, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started. The only thing I've done at home at DIY for YouTube has been my bed sheets that are curtains, which actually are right there. So those curtains are bed sheets. And I have that tutorial and I will link it right here in the description box below, but it is one of my most viewed videos on YouTube. Um, I'm definitely more of like a fashion, a productivity vlog type girl, but I really, really, really love doing DIYs as well. So I'm not gonna keep you too long. We're just gonna go ahead and get right into it. If you have not yet subscribed, go ahead, please subscribe. Like I said, I'm mainly a fashion. I love to do vlogs and videos about productivity and motivation. That is my sweet spot. I upload new videos every single week so tick that notification bell as well and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video so I'm gonna show you what we're starting with and kind of what the plan is and all the things that I'm going to use and then I'm just gonna go ahead and start with step one this morning this is the banister that I am working with and you can see I still need to fill up that very top shelf so just ignore that it'll be we'll put something up there later um, but this is kind of how I've done the staircase so we have this really big open living room area which I absolutely absolutely love, but I just hate the stair banister. So our blinds are actually that pine color as well, but they have this black in there. And then we did the top of the blinds are actually black as well. We painted those and I have like, I have a lot of black details, like my furniture, like there's a lot of little pops of black and the kitchen is mostly black as well. And so I really want to kind of keep to that theme and like this banister is like the only thing left besides that basket that is like this orangey pine color and I think it would look so good in a match. See little picture shelves that I have up there which by the way are Ikea. I can link them in the description box. I think it would just look much better if the stair banister was black. Our floors also used to be that same exact pine color, the oak color, whatever color it is and we recently got those redone. So now that the floors are done, I especially think it would look so much better if the banister was stained black. I'm gonna keep all these white. I'm just going to paint them with the shiny, glossy white that I did my baseboards in so that they match. Just a fresh coat, because I don't think they've ever been painted. We have a few repairs to do here, as you can see. Oh, my husband already filled this in, which is pretty cool, but that was a giant hole and he just filled it in with a half inch dowel rod and some glue. So we glued those in there so now we can just kind of like spackle and sand and then these little holes we're gonna fill in, sand them down as well. I don't really know what people had here, but there's just holes in the banister. It's just in really bad shape. So I'm really excited and you can see how worn down the finish is on the banister. So I'm really excited to get that done. We also have this banister upstairs. So this is visible from the downstairs front door. This is the grit sandpaper I'm using. It's 220 so it's very fine. This is the stain that I am using. So this was our kitchen island paint. We did the Valspar and it's in tricorn black. So we wanted to make sure it was the exact same color. So I ended up getting this exterior stain. We've actually already used it on an outdoor planter pot, but it's the exact same color. It's a tricorn black and this is what it looks like. So it's just an exterior stain and sealer. And this is supposed to be really good. It's actually not like a watery stain. It's a pretty thick stain. It says one coat. And I don't know how many coats I'm going to do. We'll see. Um, either one or two. I predict two because I don't want it to be streaky at all. So that is everything that we're using. This stain is really, really, really good. Like I said, we use it outside. So it's extremely durable and I want something really durable because of the amount of hand traffic that is on that handrail and I just don't want to have to like redo it in an, another year or two. That's why we decided to go with the stain instead of a paint because the original idea was to use the exact same kitchen island paint for it but from all of our research a stain is just more durable so I'm really glad that we went with that. We'll see what happens. Like I said I can't speak to durability yet but I think it's going to be great because 
this can withstand outdoors for years. So today I'm just gonna go ahead and start sanding all the handrails just to kind of get that shiny surface off. And then after I sand, I'm actually going to clean with a cleanser. I just wanna get the dirt and the grease off as much as I can so that the stain can really adhere. And I'm probably gonna go ahead and just stain. There's a ton of different ways that you can stain your staircase or paint it. With this specific stain that we got, you're not supposed to like stain it with a um, like a rag. Like you not, know, it's not really. I mean, you can rub it in, I guess. But the way that you're supposed to do it is just apply it with a brush or a foam brush or whatever. You can apply it anyway. Like some stains will tell you to do two coats and then sand the whole thing, clean it, and then do a third coat and then seal it. But since this is a stain and a sealer in one, that's not necessary. Um, and you also don't have to like stain and then sand and then stain again. So this is supposed to be pretty simple to use. So that's what I'm going to do. And that's why we chose to just use this Valspar one because it's a sealer and a stain in one. Why I won't be sanding in between my stain coats. That took me about an hour and a half, almost two hours. I am covered in dust from it. Um, it looks so disgusting. I wore a mask, but I ended up taking it off after I got done with this because I was like sweating. So I didn't wear it when I was doing that side. But this is what it looks like. So there's still a little bit of shine. I haven't even wiped it off yet. That is all like the dust particles that came down. It is so, so messy so i'm going to clean up i'm going to wipe it all down i'm also going to vacuum everything around the area okay so sanding and wiping everything down i have broken three nails so this is not for the faint of heart so this is what it looks like after it's been cleaned. You can see that there is more of a like matte finish to it. Last thing I need to do is spackle these little tiny holes and then let them dry and sand it down. Okay, we got everything ready to paint. Um, I gave up on this stuff and I'll show you why. It's just so intricate to actually tape it off. Um, and it's like that on both sides all the way up and I gave up. <laughs> so I did these. I'm hoping I can even get that stuff off, not to toot my own horn, but I have a really good brush. So this is the brush I'm using. It's the Purdy. I highly recommend this for any kind of like tedious tight spaces. This is the clear cut Dale. I believe this is a two inch one, but you can like get in really little tight spaces with this. It's just the best brush. The reason why I know that is because I did all of my baseboards in the entire house. Um, I need to redo them. We got our floors redone, so they put new molding or whatever that stuff is on. But, like, I've done, I did all of this, and my lines are pretty perfect, if I don't say so myself. Basically, since I have practice and I know for a fact that I can really, like, cut in really, really well, and I have a very steady hand, it's not scary for me. And I know if I take my time, I won't make any mistakes. Um, obviously, I'm gonna do something that I'm gonna mess up a little bit. So I have like a wet paper towel and you can just like, if you have nails, just get in there and get whatever kind of smear that you may have. But I'm also going to be painting those little white spindles anyways. So if I happen to get like a little bit of black on there, I can, you know, try to get it off with a razor and then um, like I'm gonna be painting them white anyways. So it's just not realistic for me to tape off every single one of these both times because I have to paint everything basically twice. So I'm doing the railing and then I'm doing the white again. So I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. I trust myself. I'm good at painting. I'm really good at being tedious and cutting in with that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to go for it.
of the black and now I just taped off each individual little spindle. So I'm just going to paint these spindles white and I'm gonna paint this white as well, but I'm just not going to paint over his little feet. I wanted to show the difference before I keep going. I'm really hoping that you can tell in the camera, but you can definitely tell in person. But this one has not been painted yet, and this one has. It just looks so much better. So I have finished all of the white spokes. I just have to touch up the black railing now because there's a few white spots. I also went over the top part of this as well, so everything is nice and freshly painted. They look so much better, they're so much brighter and they have a nice shine to them now. But you can see, I would like get white paint on my hand and then touch the railing and so I have quite a few little spots I need to touch up, but not too, too many. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off this painter's tape and then I have my black paint ready to go. I'm just going to do my quick little touching up. Thank you. 